It's always a privilege to be in God's house and share God's word. Um, before I get into my message, someone was having a discussion with uh, this other person and he said, uh, what are your goals for 2018? So the person who asked the question got a very calculated response. The person looked hard at this person and he said, you know what, my goal in 2018 is to accomplish the goals that I had in 2017. Uh, which I should have achieved in 2016 because I made a promise in 2015 that I will achieve these which I planned in 2014. You got that? Um, as funny as it sounds and um, as funny as it sounds um, <laughs> real, um, you know, it, this statement holds kind of true in, um, in many people's lives and sometimes in certain areas when it comes to our lives. Am I the only one? Okay, there's one more, two more. Anybody else? Yeah, and um, sometimes goals, objectives, and things that we put in front of us seem to be a very um, unachievable and a gigant gigantic task. Um, the promises, or the things that we call promises, the things that we um, look forward to, the things that we look ahead to in life, uh, just don't seem to come through together and it seems like everything gets undone and um, it, it happens, it just happens because life takes its course, isn't it? Yes? And sometimes promises just don't come together and tonight what I want to uh, leave with you are a few thoughts uh, on how are we going to, how can we just claim the promises of a God in our lives, how do we claim and how do we step into the things of God in our life even as we step into a new year? Are you with me tonight? Uh, I sure need God's help and I'm sure all of us would say the same and we want to look into God's word tonight. Um, today is the 14th and it brings closure to week number two of January and it seems like 2017 flew uh, and when we look at our lives on hindsight. Uh, it seems uh, that we look back sometimes with disappointment, with regret, and uh, we sometimes even tend to second guess ourselves in certain areas uh, because we look uh, back to things that uh, bring a lot of disappointment to us. Um, we look at people around us, we see how they progress, how they move forward, and you look at um, yourself, or I would look at myself and I would uh, tell myself, you know what, you, you've really fallen short, you're really falling back um, because comparison sets in and we compare ourselves with somebody else, we compare ourselves with somebody else who seems to be more successful in our minds or who seems to be more successful in, in the terms of the world and we get caught up in this whole rat race. Um, we, get, um, we, we, we get to a place where it breaks us, it brings us a lot of pain and the status quo, when we look at it, um, of ourselves, it paints a very grim picture. Now, I'm not trying to bring a message of depression here, okay? Uh, but those are the realities that we deal with as human beings. Yes, I've faced it in my life in certain areas and sometimes uh, in certain seasons you look at yourself and you're very, very disappointed and you get very upset. Um, and the biggest dilemma, oh, there's nobody behind us, I thought there was somebody there. Uh, the biggest dilemma that we have is, or the question that we ask ourselves is, will I ever be able to step into the land of promise? Or will I ever be able to claim those promises? Will I ever be able to claim the things that I so desire to accomplish in my heart? And that is the dilemma that we face. But in Joshua chapter 1, we see the story of how God is appointing Joshua to take over the leadership of the Israelites. And God is meeting Joshua, and God is having a chat with Joshua, and he's saying, uh, you know what, Joshua, lead the nation of Israel into the promised land. And in this discussion that God has with Joshua, there are some very interesting nuggets of truth that we can pull out. In Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through to 9, I'm going to start by reading it. Uh, it says, um, in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 9, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people 
the Israelites across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Father, we pray that your presence will, be, will continue to be amongst us. Holy Spirit, I ask you that you would speak to every heart, including mine as I speak. And I pray, Father, that none of us would hear the voice of a man, but instead we would hear your voice. We would hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and we will know the heart of God in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Now the background to this passage is this. Moses, who was leading the Israelites uh, from the land of Egypt, or who took them out of the land of Egypt, is dead. The Israelites had been wandering around in the wilderness for 40 years. A four-day journey, which took them 40 years. They were continually rebelling against God. They were grumbling, they were making fusses, and they were saying, you know, ah, when is this happening? It's better for us to go back to the uh, to the land of Egypt. We would have been better off. We had everything. We were They were in bondage in Egypt, but still they were, com- um, they were complaining. The promise or the promised land was at their fingertips. The promised land was so close, but yet so far. Are you with me? The promised land was so close, but they were yet so far. And they seemed to be stuck in this hole and seemingly unable to come out of it. Now their leader who had performed these great miracles, the one who had walked ahead, parted the Red Sea, the one who struck the rock and there was water, the one who prayed and there was manna and all kinds of things took place. There was bitter water and uh, Moses threw this uh, rod into this water and the water became normal, the water was healed and they were able to drink it. These were some phenomenal, phenomenal miracles that took place and this man whom God used to perform all these miracles was no more, he was dead, he was gone. They are basically their hero who had brought them out of the land of slavery was gone. And Joshua, the young leader or the next man, is tasked with this whole thing of leading the nation of Israel into the promised land. So the question is, how do you do this? Logical question, isn't it? How do you do it? How did Joshua do this? And the first thing that we see Um, that God um, tells Joshua is, Moses, my servant, is dead. And um, I would like to say that it's time that we close the old and hold on to the present. Close the old and hold on to the present. In other words, it's time that we recognize that it is a new season in our lives. Amen. It's time we recognize that we need to put our past behind us. The Israelites were going to make history. Something amazing, something big was in store. They were about to step in to the promised land. Something big was in store. And Moses passes away. The nation of Israel could have been lamenting the death of Moses. They could have been weeping and weeping and weeping over and over and over again. They probably would have looked back, and perhaps Joshua too may have looked back and been upset and mourning the death of Moses and lamenting and saying, you know, oh no, our hero, this person who led us, was gone. And um, the man that God spoke to face to face, Moses whom God spoke to directly, 
And all of a sudden, expectation is on Joshua. The spotlight is on him. And God says, Joshua, Moses is dead. You see, as I said before, you and I need to embrace that which is... We need to let go of what is behind us and we need to embrace what is ahead of us. Are you with me? If you and I are to claim the promised land, if you and I are to step into something new, if you and I are to move into what God is leading us, we need to let go of what is behind that, what is behind us. Um, now, I was looking at this conversation and I thought to myself, isn't God really stressing the obvious to Joshua? Joshua obviously knew that Moses was dead. But God was telling Joshua, he was stressing the obvious to Joshua and saying, you know what, Joshua? Moses is dead. And it seems like there was no closure in Joshua's mind that Moses was dead. And it seems like God had to shake him out or tell him the obvious and say, you know what, Joshua? Moses is dead. Deal with it. Joshua was a highly successful leader, but yet he had to bring closure to what was behind him. And tonight I believe God is telling us, unless we bring closure to our past, unless we bring closure to our failures, we can't really step into the promised land. Now, in no way am I trying to tell you that we mustn't reflect on the past mistakes that we have made. It's important that we reflect. It's important that we look back and try and understand where we went wrong and how we could better ourselves. But God is saying, move forward. You need to step forward to achieve what I have in store. I want you to consider this scenario. Imagine there are two boats, and the two boats are going in two different directions. And you are asked to stand on these two boats. And you put one leg on one boat, and you put the other on the other boat. And the boats are going in two different directions. You have only two things. You have only two options. One option is to jump into the other boat and take the direction of that boat. Or the other option is you just fall into the water and you drown. Those are the only two options. And I believe we are at a stage of life where we too need to make a decision, where we step out of the boat of our past and we step into the boat of our future. Because if we have both our legs on those two different boats, very quickly the boats are going to be pulled in two different directions and you and I would be sinking. Are you with me tonight? We need to step forward. We need to move forward. We have to bring closure to what is behind us. And we need to grab a hold of the new thing that God is doing. Amen? Amen. The next thought that comes is the fact that um, Joshua's time had arrived. Say it with me. Joshua's time had arrived. In verse 2, the, the second part, Verse 2 says that, uh, therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land that I am giving them. I really love what God tells Joshua here because uh, God says the time has come for you. Sometimes we think, you know, the time has come for somebody else or the spotlight is on somebody else and it's really not my thing to do. It's really not my time to move forward but the Lord is saying to us tonight your time has come and it's time for you to move forward hallelujah whatever the circumstances you might be in it could be your business and you're thinking what am I to do the Lord would say to you step forward go forward it could be your ministry and you're thinking what do I do and the Lord would say move forward because your time has arrived hallelujah because if we stay back if we don't move forward if we keep ourselves behind not realizing that our time has arrived, my brother, my sister, the chances are that we will miss the bus. And God may pass us by. But you know what? In God's grace, God sometimes gives us that second chance and second chance over and over again. And he continues to use us and continues to be with us. But let me tell you, our time has arrived. Your time has arrived. Whatever it may be that is holding you back, put it behind you. Shake off those shackles and say, my time has arrived and move forward. See, we often look for better times. We hope 
for the times to shift. We hope for the economy to improve. We hope that politically things would get stable. We wait for many, many things to fall into place. But I believe God is telling us tonight, now is our time. Now is our moment. Now is your time to do which I have put in front of you. You see, when we wait for times to improve and when we hope for everything to fall into place, it's like one of those fairy tales. You know, there's, no, there's nothing that can absolutely go wrong in a fairy tale. Somewhere in between something goes wrong, but eventually the hero is the winner, isn't it? Um, I love, uh, it's not that I really love them, but when you look at Hindi films, right? I mean, it's a perfect portrayal, nothing against Bollywood, right? But uh, it, it's, it's sometimes hilarious because the, it seems like always it's one villain at a time who attacks the hero, right? Uh, and one of my friends in conversation said, we, we were discussing this and he said, you know, otherwise the hero is going to get hurt, no? Right? But the funny thing is the hero will get bashed, he'll get bruised, and, you know, there'll be blood pouring out and he'll be fallen on the ground and then... You know, the drama that happens in, a, in, in one of those movies. And at the end, he somehow finds the strength and he comes and, you know, grabs the girl or jumps from a helicopter and then, you know, they are all saved. But you know what? Life is not like Bollywood. <laughs> Life isn't. And uh, if you and I were to wait for the perfect moment, if you and I were to wait for that moment where everything is going to work out, it's not going to work out. Because... We would, we would end up falling back if we were to wait for that. Because that time is never going to come. And God is saying to us tonight, you don't need to be waiting. Don't procrastinate. Don't wait to do that which I have put in front of you. Just go forward. Just step into it because your time has arrived. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, what is interesting is um, that uh, human nature is such that we wait for things to get better. We wait for our environment to improve, and um, that's, that's never going to come through, because the moment is now. God is telling us it's our time to rise and shine. God is telling us that the time has come for us to step into the promises that God has given us. The time has come for us to move on to those things that we have been planning and waiting for, the, for something to happen. Like I said before, for those of you who are wanting to start a business and do something in the business sector, go for it. Because now is the time. Hallelujah. For those of you who want to begin some kind of thing in ministry, you're thinking, what am I to do? Uh, do I do this? Do I do that? Whatever God drops in your mind, step into it. Just do it. Because God is giving you His blessing because it is your time. For those of you who are saying, I need to make big decisions regarding my children, regarding my home, my brother, my sister, God is telling, now is your time. For those who are saying, I need to do something with myself, especially young people, if you're saying, I need to do something with regards to education, with regards to my career, whatever that you want to do, now is the time. Hallelujah. Because God is calling us into that new thing. Some of you might be saying, well, pastor, there's a small problem with that. I don't really have a promise from God. I don't really have the know-how. I lack the funds or whatever excuse you might come. I assure you, just like God shows up when we wait for him, when you ask God for direction, God will give you an I direction. Amen. Because God doesn't want us to move around in the dark. God is a God. Sometimes God may not show us the entire picture, but God always, always, always will show us the next step. If you don't have wisdom, ask. And the promise of God in His Word is that God will give us wisdom. If it is provision that we lack, sometimes we think um, provision comes in the form of rupees and cents. Not really. God has crazy ways of bringing provision. Amen? Don't worry. God will provide. Because as we've 
we've been discussing uh, this year and as our theme says it's not by might it's not by power it's by my spirit and when we wait and when we move in the spirit of god god forces those doors open and he enables you to step through those because our time has arrived hallelujah your time has arrived amen are you with me tonight yes wave your hands are you awake if can you do this for me can you turn to your neighbor and say are you awake and just give them a pat or wake them up or give them a shake number 3 what is this promise or know your promise believe it or not as god's children we are children of promise would someone say amen good grief we are children of promise we are children of promise you and i are children of promise as god's children we have certain givens however what happens is we live unaware of the benefits that you and i have been given and we often live defeated pastor dishan used an illustration a couple of weeks ago and that was about the the family that got into a cruise ship uh, or who was who collected all the money they had and they bought this ticket to go into uh, to america from europe and they had collected all the money and they had managed to buy the tickets and the family was so scared and they had managed to get some bread together some cheese together and um, so that they would sustain themselves so at the end of the journey they had come out and uh, the captain of the ship had asked you know how was the food and then the 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 father of the family had said you know what what food what are you talking about we we just managed with some scraps of bread and with some cheese and the captain said you know what your ticket had paid for all the food that was there in the ship and you missed out and often we as children of god live a lot like that not fully knowing what comes uh, or what blessings we have what promises we have where as as children of god in dialogue you have this full package right you get uh, so many amounts of minutes free you get so many sms's free you get so much of data now the biggest thing is the number of gbs you can get you get like the complete package call a line identification you name it the full package and i'll tell you what we often don't use the benefits or we don't live uh, enjoying the benefits of the full package that god has given us are you with me and i just want us to be reminded today um what kind of promises that we have and it's good for us to look at the book of exodus where god gives moses a promise of what he had in store for his children or the nation of israel and what it says in exodus chapter 6 verse 6 is therefore say to the people of israel i am the lord i will free you from your oppression and i will rescue you from your slavery in egypt i will redeem you with a powerful arm and great acts of judgment i will claim you as my own people and i will be your god then you will know that i am the lord your god who has freed you from your oppression in egypt i will bring you into the land i swore to you so to give to you uh, to abraham isaac and jacob i will give it to you as your very own possession i am the lord the promise that god gave joshua was the promise that he gave moses and when god rescued the israelites there were 400 years in of they were in 400 years of complete oppression they were living in slavery they were held captive in a place where they were not supposed to be in they were in the land of egypt they lived completely out of the will of god they were unable to really worship their god and it meant that they were also in a spiritual mess and god through mighty acts um uh, through moses ends up delivering these people and just like jesus through what he did on the cross of calvary brought deliverance to you and i would you say amen 2000 years ago yes jesus has delivered us and today we have experienced his love and his love um has given um you know we've given our li- uh, lives to him and we experience the cleansing blood of jesus and as a result of what jesus has done for us You know we have been rescued from oppression and slavery amen just like the israelites were rescued from 
oppression and slavery and this is a promise that we have we have been rescued we are no more slaves to our sin we are no more under the hold of sin and what it means is from the status of being a slave you and i carry the status of royalty what a transformation hallelujah from a place of being a slave from a place of being in bondage from a place of being dragged around and um asked to do whatever somebody else wants you to do god places royalty upon us and what happens is most of us as god's children we stop just right there we think i have received royalty and that's it but you know what the second uh, another part of this verse which we read in exodus 6:6 um it says that we have redemption from the clasp of the enemy what it means is that the enemy or satan has absolutely no control of our lives amen come on he has absolutely no control of our lives you know kids have remote control cars i love those things right um you go and uh, you go and crash or the things sometimes and all kinds of things happen and as long as somebody is holding on to that remote controller the car goes around isn't it the car moves around now imagine there's a really destructive and naughty kid and you give this little kid that car you know what he does and sasha is smiling uh he goes and he bashes onto the feet of people he'll go over the feet of people he'll go crash the car onto a wall or you know do whatever it takes to destroy the thing or destroy something in its path but you have a kid who is very sedate like me uh who's uh very composed and who doesn't you know do many naughty things uh you give that person a, the remote controller he'll you know sit in a corner see the car go all over the place he'll avoid all the road blocks or those things that are in the way and have a good time with the car you know when satan has the remote of our lives he's worse he's not a destructive kid he's just somebody who wants to bring destruction upon us are you with me yes and he would lead us and take us strategically using that remote control down into destruction because what the word of god says is that the thief has come to kill steal and destroy but you know what as the scriptures tell us we are no more in the clasp of the enemy hallelujah no more is the remote control of our lives in the hand of satan amen because god is holding the control of our lives amen and the the direction that god wants to take us is in a path of blessing hallelujah it's in a path of not just blessing us but also in a path of blessing many others around us amen we are not just blessed people we are people who have the power and the capacity to bless and god uses us to bless people and that's what the promise entails that we are free from the clasp of the enemy we have been redeemed the scripture also says that we are god's possession i love this that we are god's possession you know a uh, daughter is always a father's prized possession isn't it uh, a wife is a husband's prized possession and god says to his people that they would be his possession amen and tonight god is reminding us saying we are his possession there is a promise in the scriptures that tell us that we are god's possession in other words he says that he would make these children his or you and i are his God says that I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God. I say that again, I will claim you as my own people and I will be your God. Talk about a promise. And talk about a promise that God is giving. We often live like illegitimate children and you can you can find plenty of stories of how cruel uh step parents can treat or ill treat their step children but god says you know what you're not a illegitimate child you're not a step child of mine you are mine you are my possession you belong to me i own you 
and we don't have to live with that beggar mentality we don't have to live with that pleading mentality because we are royalty and we are god's children and we belong to god would you say amen we don't belong to the devil but we belong to god hallelujah and the beautiful thing about god's plan for us for his possession for his children for his babies for his children whom he looks upon with love and compassion and and so much of enthusiasm is that when we look at the book of psalms it says surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life and that is the promise as as god's children that we have i a uh, few months ago i happened to go to um wasgamo uh, and wasgamo is famous for all the elephants and um we saw um this herd of elephants uh, we we happened to stay in the in the campsite um inside the jungle and we did safaris and there was this herd of elephants that had a, a cute little cub elephant cub and you could see how the the big elephants the mother elephant and the uh, the big other big elephants in the herd they take so much of care in taking care of this little elephant and this little baby elephant is the pride of the flock they they make sure that the baby elephant doesn't get into trouble they make sure that the baby elephant doesn't stay alone and if by chance they feel that the baby elephant is threatened i'll tell you the elephants will start charging you and you don't want to be in their path and they take so much of care of the little baby elephant and uh, someone was actually telling me how he once saw uh, there was a new uh, there was a baby that was born and the elephants were crossing a river and he said he has never seen that even on tv and he said how the elephants put their trunks together wove their trunks together to actually carry that little baby elephant over the water what a beautiful picture and think about it you and i are god's possession and god is far bigger far greater humongous far bigger than an elephant and god looks at us with so much of love and compassion and when you and i are god's possession that is the kind of love that god showers over you and i would you say amen and that is a promise that you and i have as god's children and we also have an inheritance a promise of god's inheritance for each of us he has a promised land prepared just like he has prepared for the israelites for you and for me for the israelites it was the land of canaan but for you and i it is something unique that he has in store but the fact of the matter is you and i have an inheritance from god and what god says is i will give it to you as a possession um a writer by the name of jerry bridges says this about inheritance and i will quote it says our inheritance in christ is reserved amen it's reserved it's separated it's set aside and no one else can take it he says what we have in christ is being kept in heaven for us your crown of glory has a name on it although we enjoy many blessings as children of god here on earth our true inheritance our true home is reserved for us in heaven like abraham we are looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is god the holy spirit guarantees that we will receive eternal life in the world to come in fact when you believed you were marked in him with a seal the promised holy spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance amen you and i are children of promise hallelujah um the fourth thing that god told joshua was to be bold he said in Joshua 1:6 uh, to 7a he said be strong and courageous for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land i swore to their ancestors i would give them be strong and very courageous the question i had uh, at this point of time is um from being a timid person from being a silent or a laid back person how do i become bold for someone who doesn't have boldness and um in cricket as a batsman if you want to be bold that is b o l d bold 
uh, against someone like Brett Lee or Lasit Malinga, good chance that you will get bowled out or B-O-W-L-E-D out, right? And that can happen to us in life if we try to become bold. And I would wonder if uh, boldness is something that we can put on and put off as and when we like. I, I just want to be bold and and I, wa- I thought to myself, no, that doesn't really happen like that. And a scripture came to my mind, uh, which is found in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, which says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Would you say amen? Would you say it? For God has given us a spirit of... For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power. Would you say it? But of power, love, and self-discipline. When God's spirit begins to work in us, we change. Our inner being begins to change. Our responses change. And God begins to anoint us. And the anointing of God begins to bring out a certain characteristic of boldness in us. And as God's children, we don't have to be dictated to by the things of the world. But instead, you and I can be people who carry the anointing of God, boldly leading and being a prophetic person, a prophetic voice in this nation. Would you say amen? And that is the promise of God. And when the, as the scripture says, God has given us a spirit of power, of love, of self-discipline. You know, this year's theme is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. And as we wait upon the Lord, as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, God will begin to bring that boldness. He will begin to bring out that characteristic of boldness in us and through us. And you and I will be able to step in to the promises or claim those promises of God with absolute boldness. And I'll leave my last thought, which is, uh, as I bring this time to a close, um, we find it in Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 onwards all the way to verse 8 which says be strong and courageous and he says be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you do not deceive from them turning either to the right or to the left then you will be successful in everything you do study this book of instruction continually meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do Let's stick to the principles of God. Amen. Amen. Come on. The word of God to Joshua was to live in the word, to meditate on it day and night, to read it day and night, to think through it day and night, and obey every command that is given. And the promise of God to Joshua was, you will succeed in everything that you do. Talk about hands that turn anything into gold. There are gardeners who people say have green hands, whatever they plant just grows. There are certain people who would do business and it would succeed. And God's telling Joshua, if you stick to my word, if you follow every command that I'm giving you, if you meditate on it day and night, if you read it day and night, if you live in this, if you make this a part of your life, if you bring it, if you allow the word to permeate into your heart, if you allow the word uh, that permeate into your heart, if you practice it out in your life, you will succeed in everything that you do. And I believe, my brother, my sister, God will take us into new heights when we live in his word. Amen. When we abide in the ways of God, when we know what God's principles are for us, you and I will step into success. I will close with um, Psalm 118, verse 23. And I would like all of us to turn into it. Psalm 118, verse 23. When you and I live the promise of God. When you and I step into the promise of God, even as we get a hold 
of the words that God spoke to Joshua. And when we see God's work fulfilled through our lives, I believe people would turn around and say, this is the Lord's doing. And it is wonderful to see. Amen. Would you say it with me? This is the Lord's doing and it is wonderful to see. This is the Lord's doing and it is wonderful to see. And what a testimonial. Truly, people will see that God is working through you and I and that you and I would be step, able to step in to the promises that we have in store for us. May God bless you.